Hi, everybody. Welcome to Psychics Explained. I have my very, very good friend, Adrian Hill, here with me tonight. I want I want you all to know that I really appreciate her stopping by at the very last minute with me to, to go over this article that is published today, March 12th, 2024 in skepticalinquire.org and the article is called Thomas John same as he ever was and I want to talk about it um a little more in depth I know that um the article is full and there's links in there to everything that anybody could possibly want but Adrian read it today and you know we've been talking about it a little bit and I, I really want to get her thoughts and feedback on it and I want to introduce it to you guys the viewers out there who might not be reading it or have it in a place where you could read it and and um, I want to just kind of talk about that a little bit more as well as my call to action at the very end so hey Adrian thank you so much for joining me today oh it's fun I'm glad you uh, included me this is much more fun than cleaning up the dishes after dinner <laughs> if you wait long enough maybe they'll accidentally get cleaned up by somebody else <laughs> exactly <laughs> it doesn't work very well like that in my house but um my husband knows you and I well and he said I'll see you tomorrow Adrian <laughs> <laughs> you're in Canada so I hear that exists still it still exists yeah yeah I wasn't quite sure I thought that was a fictional place but um the snow's basically gone away though so we're well, almost at nice weather like you I mean it was oh lovely today. blue sky not freezing anymore so it's lovely I, I've been planting tomatoes the last few days and we are, spring is here. I mean, my gosh, it's, it's March 12th and we've got springtime and my daffodils are coming up and who knows what I've been planting. I, I know I love this time of the year whenever you just anticipating it's going to be spring. Oh, I know everybody just loves hearing this that little <laughs> back and forth in there. All about gardening and snow in Canada. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, if the earth was flat, we would have no <laughs> we would have the, the weather would be the same everywhere right or no does it supposed to clouds i don't know how it's supposed to work but uh, i don't know how it works uh, you told me anyway all right so you have a pretty powerful microphone there i understand you keep buying new microphones or being given microphones why why would you have a bunch of microphones because well one of them well this one here i bought when i first started working with Richard Saunders for the Skeptic Zone. And then I won this one from Road. I don't know if I can have an arm long enough. Yeah, there you go. I'm telling you. That one I won, which is really nice. And all in their little one, stands. This one Richard bought me because I am going the Skeptic Zone. Yeah, from the Skeptic Zone, Richard Saunders. He bought this for me uh, for when I'm going to LA in oh, it's a week. It's just a week. Oh my and a gosh! Day. And a week and a couple of days, we're gonna. Be, I know we're gonna be in Los Angeles at the, at the Skeptic Camp down there. Yes. Anybody who's still listening to this, go! It's gonna be a blast. We're gonna have so much fun. Can I come and hang out and get interviewed with this microphone. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. <laughs> I like that idea. I will be there. You can interview awesome. me if you want for the Skeptic Zone. <laughs> so all right, so what are we going to do? I, I have been waiting for, okay, let me give you a little bit of background for those people who haven't been paying great attention. Thomas John is a grief vampire that I first was first found out about in 2017 um, by accident. I didn't know anything about him. I just happened to be in LA on a certain weekend. And a friend of mine said she saw an ad for Thomas John appear on her Facebook. And she said, you know what, this might be a person to do a sting on because we'd been doing stings. He was not the first. And I wanted to catch somebody who had hot read because if we hot read, if I catch a hot reader, then the New York Times wanted to do an article on it. Adrian, you want to say what hot reading is? Oh boy, you're putting me on the spot. Let's see how much I've learned from you. So <laughs> hot, <laughs> hot reading is something that a psychic will do by looking you up online so it might be from an obituary they might find out about dead relatives might be on social media facebook twitter wherever they can look all over the place but hot reading can also be where they've met with you before mm -hmm. and so they know something about you already mm -hmm. or they find out information about you from a third person 
I believe that's hot reading as well. Is that mm -hmm. not right? Like in the bathroom, they have a plant and they get chatting to somebody and find out some information. What are you here for? I'm here for whatever. And then they tell the plant what they're here for. And then they pass the information on. How did I do? Those, that was excellent. Um, awesome. well, most people don't think of hot reading in the way that you said about overhearing a conversation or going up to somebody and just asking them, you know, they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be here tonight. Who are you here to hear from? Oh, I'm here to hear from my mom. Really? Oh, me too. I'm here to hear from my mom. What about your mom? You know, and they get information or having had previous readings with the person. There's so many ways of getting um, knowledge, but I think we're pretty unique. What you just said as a formal hot reading. I don't think most people understand that being re read previously is a formal you hot see reading. your mind has entered mine. Yeah, I know. It must be that. It must be psychic connection. <laughs> well, you know, Some kind pe of people yeah. don't really think about that because if you have good service, you would think you, and you had a good reading with somebody, you would think you'd want to go back to the same psychic. And it's, mm -hmm. I mean, in, if it worked, I mean, if they really were in touch with your dead family members, that would make sense. But mm -hmm. If they're just, and you, you're ahead. not going to remember what you talked about necessarily unless you recorded it. I can't remember what I've told people. I can't remember what I told my husband yesterday. I can't remember what I told you versus another friend. Have I told mm -hmm. everybody the story or not? Mm -hmm. So it's hard to remember exactly what you would have said if it was a month ago, a year ago, right. whatever it may have been. And we don't realize how much information we give. Like we yeah. just, you and I just had a full conversation about gardening. And just from that little bit of conversation we had, you can get lots of information about yeah. the personalities of the person or maybe their upbringing, where we live, you know, you're in snow, I'm in, exactly. I'm in springtime and there's just yep. a lot you can glean. I mean, obviously if I love gardening and, and so on, I probably am from a family that has had somebody who gardens and um, passed it down to me. I'm not usually going to live with uh you know ha not have had a parent who or a family member who really was um gave me that love of, of being in the garden and flowers and so on there's just a lot you can glean from somebody just a little conversation they had see i tied in our conversation about the garden into the the conversation we're about to have with psychics <laughs> well planned well yeah, planned just like i was thinking that out mm -hmm. <laughs> um so thomas john uh, I have written about for years and I am so done. And <laughs> I, I tell you, Adrian, when you, when you come out with some kind of information about a certain thing, it's like if somebody finds out you collect frog uh, figurines and then you're like, oh, I like frogs. And then people start seeing frogs somewhere when they're traveling or they see a gift or whatever. All of a sudden they have to buy these frogs for you and you end up with this giant collection of frogs and you think, well, I like frogs, but I didn't really like them that much enough that I have all this clutter in my house and I feel guilty if I give them away. So you end up with this massive collection of frogs. And that's what Thomas John, Thomas John is to me, a giant frog. And, when, you know, you do this sting and you come out with this information and then somebody reaches out to you and says, oh, let me tell you this story. Let me show you this document. Let me tell you about my reading with Thomas John. And you're like, oh, that's interesting. And you start collecting it. And every time you think you're done with this, somebody's got another piece of information for you. Or there's like a trail that you didn't quite go down. And you say, you know, if I have time, I'd like to understand what happened there. And that's what's going on. I want to be done with this man. But people keep pulling me back in because there's always something new, interesting or I'm hoping I'm, I, I, I'm hoping I'm pretty much done. And I'm sure he's hoping I'm done. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Well, I guess you got pulled in after the seatbelt psychic. That was another one where you got some information from one of the actors. Oh, that's true. Yeah. People yeah. reach out and they say, yeah. one of the people who was on the show who reached out and on and on, and then another person, and then somebody else told me this and that. Oh yeah. You just... And you start gathering all this information. You're like, well, what am I supposed to do with this? So you do another video or an article. The thing is, Adrian, what I want to do right now is this article that I have out, Thomas John, same as he ever was, that published today, March 24th, no, March 12th, 2024. I want yeah. to, to give all the links that I possibly can and give it out 
And now I want those people who've been victimized by Thomas John to do the work now, because I, you know, at a certain point, we need to pass on this to somebody else. So I need them to take on the reins. And that's what I want to talk about with you today. And hopefully people who are listening to this will, who um, are tired of it. And I'm, I'm giving them this article. Hopefully they'll just take it and say, okay, I've got this now, Susan. Let me, let me deal with this. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that works. Okay. So let me show everybody the, the video, the video, the link. Um, you were saying you like the title. I do. I think that that title is very clever. And uh, Barry and I went back and forth on the title. I wanted <laughs> Thomas John Offender, Thomas John Flanagan, because I wanted it to be more Googleable. We can right. call him Offender now because we've got oh, a site to. Main Offender. <laughs> Mark wants me to call him Main Offender. M-A-I-N. Mm. Main Offender. Well, Tom, um, Barry told me that he wanted same as he ever was, like the song from um, Talking Heads. Yes. And yeah, I've had a couple a people song. reach out and they said, isn't that a Talking Heads song? And I'm like, yeah, I love the Talking Heads. They were great. <laughs> Burning down the house. Remember that? Yeah. And this photo, oh my gosh. <laughs> they used in here. Great. Uh, yeah. Okay. So if people want to know more about some of the things I have written, you can um, subs you can go to skepticalinquire.org and my column that is written monthly, this is my second article this month. The one I just published was why won't medium solve crimes. I didn't know I was going to publish this other one. So this is two within a week and that's not normal for me. I mm -hmm. usually publish once a month, but this is a column. You can, you can find all my old pasts uh, there, or you can go to my website about time project.org. All right. So where to start? Adrian, you want to start? Oh, I think that the way you started with the article was really good saying that if somebody has served their time and changed their ways, leave them alone and give them a chance and let's not bring this up. But the fact is that he has repeated this just in, a, I was going to say in another medium. <laughs> 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 and then I realized what I was about to say and then I thought well I think I will say that <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think was it uh, Holy Kool-Aid who did a video and he described it really really well with how he did something that was against the law with the apartments and the Craigslist saying that I have this apartment for rent, taking the deposit, but he actually didn't have the apartment and people would show up on their doorstep and wouldn't have a place to stay. And all of a sudden faced with a hotel, uh, an emergency hotel, because they needed a place to live now. And I think in your article, it said a lot of them were medical students who medical were students. Uh, doing the residency and mm -hmm. just needed a, a part-time, they just needed a short-term rental until the residency was done and they would show up and they have no place to stay. And the, he went from that, which was the police caught him and it was illegal, et cetera. And then he moved to something where he could do the same thing, but nobody will do anything about it. Yeah. That is odd to me. I find that extremely interesting how nobody will do anything about it. I had, I had on a totally different subject, a woman reached out to me today and she says, I've been a victim of a, a fortune telling scam. Mm. And she's like, what do I do? And I'm like, well, you know, that's not my area. I do usually psychic mediums. And she gave me all the details. And she said that the, the psychic medium or the psychic media it was a medium, but um, is part of a crime syndicate. And she sent me a link to a person who had been, who had fallen in love with somebody and that person moved to another state and psychic told her to move with them, you know, to move after them, to be near them. And the psychic kept giving him advice and it was a hundred thousand dollars. They had taken from this woman. Uh, you know, she thought she was going to end up getting married to the person and that never happened, but it kept on the manipulation. So anyway, that was a court case. It was an actual court case. She gave me the link to that. I was reading it today. But 
The woman who's asking me for advice, she said she was taken for over $550,000 over 10 years. Half, so half a million dollars. U.S. Yeah. That's a lot of milk duds. I'm telling you, <laughs> it's a lot of bulbs for the garden. But she says, and she was telling me it was a two years of manipulation. Uh, yeah. It was over 10 years, but two years of manipulation. She time. cannot get the police to take um, to do anything about it they told her she's reported it to the police and they're they're just like yeah we're not going to do anything i i just i don't what? understand five hundred and fifty thousand. no a uh, crime I think, syndicate of people i think part of it is because when there's a property it's either there or it's not when it's something like talking to the dead it's you can't disprove it. Well, in this case, well, I know Bob Nygaard has been able to prove these when he takes them on. And he's got, you know, he says he gets dozens of calls constantly yeah. saying, you yeah. know, please help me. I've been taken by this scam. And he's he's gotten millions of dollars of restitution for people. But it's yeah. just him. Nobody else does this. He well, says and I think he's had the problem with the police not wanting to take it on, though. And is that mm -hmm. part of it, though, is because you're selling an idea instead of a department. Is that why the police are not willing to take it on? It's too difficult to pin okay. down. I, I mean, you're right. He he's, said he's that the district successful. attorney, the district attorney has to be interested. Yeah. If, if you can get the district attorney for that precinct or what, that area interested, then the police will have to take it on. But mm. uh, getting it to the district attorney probably takes the police taking it seriously. You know, Adrian, I don't have a good answer for for you but as i've been doing this a lot of years now especially in the last year that i've had this youtube channel i wonder how much of it is victim blaming they think well that was mm -hmm. stupid why yep. did you do that and you're women so yep. eh, it's just women yeah yeah i i kind of wonder i i don't have an answer because all i know is that they're not taking it seriously and this woman yeah. she's like i've got documented everything and have uh, you sent her to bob Ny nygaard yeah she had a conversation with bob that's too busy and he says we need more bob well i've told bob he should be cloned but nobody's <laughs> taking me seriously and i it's it's a he says you have to approach it as fraud not as right. a psychic thing it is a fraud and um you know they made promises that aren't happening i don't know i had, I had another one um today i don't want to say too much but uh very uh, uh somebody i know mm -hmm. she told me she's a realtor and she told me that she's trying to sell a condo for a client and the client won't take any of her advice because it it, it keeps combating the advice her psychic tells her oh. so the psychic says the place is going to sell um you know in three days or whatever it's been months and it's just she's not taking any of the any of the advice of the realtor who's experienced realtor and uh, then, oh, what's the harm? Yeah, <laughs> what's the harm at all? And so the realtor is like saying, come on now, look, you have an offer on this. Oh, no, my psychic says it's going to be a bigger offer if I wait. And she's like, no, this is not. Here's the, the market value. Yeah, yeah, this is the buy now. I mean, sell it. Mm -hmm. what is, you know, what, what's going on? And oh, no, my psychic. And then she says, <laughs> she checked in with the woman and she says, um, my psychic had a, ha, um, I can't reach my psychic right now because my psychic had a really big, bad breakup with her boyfriend. So <laughs> she can't reach her. And then the, uh, <laughs> the relative friend of mine it's said, sad, don't you think the psychic would have known that this big breakup was going to happen to her? Yeah. And she should have known. And everybody says, oh, it doesn't work like that, Susan. Uh -huh. no, they can't see things that are close to them. It's like, oh yeah, right. Oh, okay. There's rules, huh? Uh, there, there's rules yeah that are convenient so yeah. you know there's there's super harm yeah there's a lot of harm and uh, back to sort of the, the the you need somebody in the prosecution side to actually take it seriously for the police to take it seriously i'm wondering if female prosecutors might take it more seriously they may not they may not be any more empathetic at all but maybe we need Letitia yeah. James or somebody like that to take it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, she would do it. I, yeah. but, I mean, come on. This is fraud. 
it, it shouldn't be that hard. The yeah. the one the one woman who wrote to me today about the five hundred and fifty thousand dollars that's a lot of money in Canadian dollars, right? That's like in U.S. dollars. Oh my goodness, yeah. <laughs> it's like a couple gazillion dollars and, yeah. um, in Canadian, but <laughs> <laughs> she was telling me that. So sad. Yeah, well, it was really sad, but she she said mm-hmm. she can't get any any anything, and I and she says that the the women in this crime syndicate are doing psychic stuff, and the men in this crime syndicate because it's family, so there's three families. Mm-hmm. They're doing right. scams on car um, cars, mechanics, um, um, construction, but they're all these. They're running these different kinds of scams mm-hmm. on on. Like, I guess, I don't know, I guess they show up at people's houses and they say, I'm going to fix your, your roof. And then they don't really, mm-hmm. they go up on the ladder and they make a lot of noise and they, they know the <laughs> home isn't going to go up there and look and maybe <laughs> take some pictures of a roof and say, Hey, see, I fixed it. Give me, you know, give me a thousand dollars or I don't know what it is they do, but it's that kind of thing. They take advantage of people who can't climb on the roof or don't know a lot about cars and, yeah. and I'll do it for you cheap and give me a deposit or you know, pay me half now and you could pay me half when I'm done. And then they pay them half now. And then they just never show up for the other half yeah. because they've yeah. got half. And sometimes that's four or $500 into somebody. Yeah. Who it adds up. Is going to and show back up. That, that was the same thing with Thomas John, correct? With all these deposits, they were between what was it? $50 and $1,500, but it mm-hmm. averaged up to be 500 or something like that right. overall. And it, again, it's not the money necessarily. I mean, to some people, $50 is a lot of money. I mean, mm-hmm. there's times in my life that an extra fifty dollars in my my uh, household account would have been made life oh, a lot easier in my family. Yeah. Um, so it's it's not the money necessarily, even though that is relative. Mm-hmm. I mean, somebody could lose a hundred thousand dollars, and it would be like, oh man, that was awful. But I mean, <laughs> not like to me, that would be a lot of money. Yeah. Lot. That's nine hundred thousand in Canadian. But um, <laughs> if <laughs> It's the yep. feeling, the feeling of being taken advantage of that you were that, especially in a vulnerable way. And the yeah. feeling that uh, people aren't going to take you seriously, or you've been made a joke of, and somebody's laughing at you behind, behind your back. And people are like, well, that was dumb. Why'd you do that? How stupid. And I guess that's also a perception about the real estate one. Everyone gets mad. You show up and you don't have a place to stay people understand that and they go, well, yeah, that that's awful, right? That's terrible. But, oh, you fell for a psychic scam. Oh, yeah. well, that's that not right. Dumb. What were you thinking? Of course not. This, and you it's know, wrong. we're wrong. saying it. Yeah. And we're saying this now here in 2024, we're saying, mm-hmm. well, if you need a short-term lease or, you know, you don't have to sub, uh, sub lease something, mm-hmm you just get Airbnb or something like that. Or you get one of these um, uh, hotel places that are like extended stay places. But this was 2008 and 2009. Long time ago. We didn't have Airbnb. And so it was rare for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what, do you know what that means? Um, A sublease? Because I think I know what it means, but it's, do you have a better understanding? Oh, a sub a sublease, I believe, is when somebody is leasing it and then they move out and then they have somebody else replace it. Yeah, they usually have, yeah. while they're yeah while they're gone. Yeah, or the and, contract, like they have a contract mm-hmm. that I have to move out in a year. I signed it, and if I leave early, I'm gonna lose a lot of money. So you That's put right. somebody in, yes, for those months that you're there. And, and you're supposed to contact the landlord, I believe, when that happens, but not everybody does. And they just. Yeah. So it's a it sublease. Out. And yeah. in this articles, and let me share this. Okay. So anyway, so I had been really curious. Okay. You and I get to talking. Oh my gosh. It's so fun hanging out with you. But <laughs> we're a little off track. Okay. We are. Get back on track. Let's go back it's, it. it's brilliant. It's all interesting. But the thing is, is that what happened with Thomas John is there was a scam going on in uh, the police in Chicago knew that this was going on and multiple people, they weren't quite sure what was going on, but they were getting reports saying that somebody was um, subleasing something that didn't exist. And Mm -hmm. they were doing it in multiple states, Washington, D.C., 
um, I thought I'd heard Alaska, but um, I am oh. Boston, Massachusetts, Maine. and somewhere else. I mean, um, Miami. Oh, Wasn't it Miami? I can't remember. Maybe Miami. Well, so Maybe. so yeah. they were. It took the police a while, and, and the documents that I have that are linked in this article, it took a little bit of while for them to figure out it was actually different people. And Thomas John was doing it under his own name with his own location as well as a whole bunch of aliases mm -hmm. and he had a whole bunch of different fake accounts and and things like that because i remember reading about this on on a scam site so what okay. they used to do back before we had um, a lot of social media is people would fall for the scam whatever it was and they were in touch with the phone number it was the phone number that was calling the person and and it and the phone number you could see it so there was this 800 um, website and it still exists it's linked to in this article where you could take the phone number it was like reverse phone number lookup and people would reverse look up a phone number and then they found this place where people were gathering to complain about what was happening to them with this phone number and there's a bunch of people on that who are who that's when when the story starts coming around like oh wait that happened to my brother-in-law oh my gosh i know somebody else and and then this then after a while people go wait a minute this is this is giant you know and who knows how many people didn't report it on this 800 reverse yeah. phone number lookup site i mean there's only i don't know 27 or to the police like police don't know about they, there may be a lot. I mean, there were, I was yeah. amazed at how many people were in the police report. There's a lot. Oh my gosh, you guys, scammed. I had no idea. So, and, and Thomas John downplays it, correct? That's one of the yeah. things that he does when he talks about it. Well, and you would expect if you had been convicted of a crime, right? And you're mm -hmm. out and you want to lead a normal life and move on with your life. You're not going to go, well, yeah, there was actually this many victims in this. You know, you're not going to brag about it. You're going to downplay it. I get that. There's nothing wrong with it that sense. it's just if you go on and lead a good life without continuing the scam with different victims I'm doing the same thing just in a with a different job in a different scenario right but he's not doing the same thing with women promising them readings mm -hmm. selling a service and then not coming through he's ghosting them yeah and waiting <laughs> you know <laughs> You got it. It I took a while know. to get from California to Canada there. It took a little while to get here. Exactly. <laughs> oh God, you and I, I had to use that mirror. He, he ghosted him. He yeah. It, 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 so, I mean, thank you for mentioning that. It really was distasteful. And I had these FOIA requests for a while and I thought, what the heck? You know, my friend JD um, Sword, you can check him out on Skeptical Inquirer. Really great guy wonderful writer um yes. he's the one who who went and, and investigated this until he found these um reports and there may be different you know maybe he'll find something else i don't know i mean it's out there you just have to request it so foia is freedom of information act it's um it's a government thing if you write to them and you ask them specific questions then they have to release it and what they released was redacted from 2009 mm -hmm. i believe but I'm glad you said that because I really felt that this was distasteful. And for a long time, I thought, should I release this information or not? Because I would never have done that for somebody who who wasn't continuing the scam. Right. I, I would never right. do that. I mean, so it felt it bad. I felt really bad. I don't want to be belittling somebody. Yeah. Or, I don't like ad hominems to people. I hate it when people right. make fun of people who... Even I don't like the person. I mean, somebody on in politics that I can't stand. I don't like making fun of them for their speed, no. speech no. or their eating habits or their hair or the way they walk or how long their tie is. I, I find that wrong. But I agree. let's let's let their actions are what bothers me. Mm -hmm. Anyway, okay. So you're yeah, you're a pattern that's mm -hmm. happened, right? This is a pattern of behavior and he's getting away with it this time and he's gotten away with it for years and he got away with it back then too oh my gosh oh wow guys. but he got caught <laughs> he did get caught eventually they're like oh oh i know yeah wait till yeah. you see this you guys if you haven't already seen this okay so 
the other thing is I have a team of people who do a lot of investigation for me and keep up the, keep up watching what's going on. I mean, I can't be everywhere. I have, I have the entire uh, Wikipedia to run. <laughs> you guys, with it's, your a joke. Seven it's a joke. I don't really run Wikipedia. Budget. Hmm? <laughs> with your seven plus million dollar budget. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Those it goes straight awful. to milk duds. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It's all spin on milk duds. No, that's, that's UFO stuff. You guys just ignore what we're talking about. Okay. I am not running Wikipedia, but <laughs> far from it. So, we are a small group of millions of millions editors. Of correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, so no, millions of editors, millions, oh, millions of editors. We run millions of pages on Wikipedia, more than there are Wikipedia <laughs> pages that exist in all languages. Apparently, I I control them, and I personally am approving all all edits on all yeah. Wikipedia pages in all languages. Right, I think That's we're right. at that point now. Yep. So one of my editors found this article and I, I should try to find it. Why don't you talk for a second while I just, Oh my goodness. What do I talk about? More about uh, the Thomas John article? Well, yeah, about <laughs> just that second or third paragraph right there before, before I, I was trying to find this earlier today and it didn't come up for some strange reason. I was trying to open up this book and oh, the uh, psychics, healers, and mediums. Yeah. The top, uh, okay, so talk about what's on by... there. Let me see if I can find that. Well, it says, I, I've forgotten what it says. Um... I can get an audible sample, but I can't figure out how I opened it up to get the print. And I did have it because I was quoting from it. I want to be able to show people. But right now it only wants to give me a... I, I will leave this article on her. It looks like it talks about your, the suspicion that he was looking people up before their readings through their PayPal accounts. And then she asked for Thomas John's response. And it says, I tried to get out. Oh, about, yeah. he. Uh, uh, she asked him about his previous conviction. And he said, I tried to get out of a lease by subleasing it myself through Craig Craigslist. It didn't go very well. I bounced a check and made a couple of bad choices. That was almost 10 years ago, and that's not who I am anymore. And he told Weagle, that's the author of this book, that he went home and, quote, got his life together, end quote. And his, quote, gifts became much more pronounced, end quote, at that time. And that he did... A, he, and, he paid everybody back all $40,000 that he scammed people from. He says he paid back. Did all he of them. Pay it? Yeah. Did you find any evidence that he paid it back? No, none at all. You know, it's not coming up. I just went to the original link that I found this from where you could, you know, it's on yep. Amazon and Google Books. Sometimes you can open up the book and see samples of the print. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it's because. I've already looked at this link and maybe they won't let me do it. Let me send it to you and see if it'll Oh, open. that may be, yeah. Because okay. it's only giving me a Kindle. And it does say, and he's correct here. I mean, he says, we may, we all make mistakes and I am no exception. Well, and that's fair. We do all make mistakes, but then we don't go and not give readings to people that have paid two, three, four hundred dollars $400. Well, and isn't he charging like a thousand dollars for a day right now if you want to spend a day oh with no him? no if you want to spend an eight-hour day with him it's ten thousand dollars ten thousand dollars i thought it was you get lunch you get you get a lunch <laughs> and, oh, and he says it's a value of five hundred dollars yeah okay did, where did you see it to me a lot of calls does it come up do you I see i don't know where did you... oh I there it is okay and underneath see, it says um on my end here, I'm going to screen share my end so people can see, because maybe you guys can figure this oh, out. Oh, yeah. It's only giving me an audible sample right now. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. See, it was before it was giving me an option to be able to look at the. Yeah, you know, I've seen that before. Like inside. And now I can't. I can't. It was right there. It just was like, read inside. <laughs> so I can't get it to open. So maybe somebody else can find it on Google, Google or I don't know if that got changed. Yeah, recently. something's changed. Yeah, it's only only audible right Maybe now. Maybe because I, I accessed it and they say only five people yeah. in a month can access. I don't know. Anyway, 
I didn't want to take a screen capture of it or anything like that because it's of copyright. Copyright, yeah. So, but yeah. I, I yeah. would have been okay to show it to you on video. But anyway, it's in there. It's this. It's chapter one of this book. It's Thomas John, and she's talking about how amazing he is and how nobody. In fact, I was going to do a video on this because she was saying there's no way he could have looked up this information about her, um, her in laws. <laughs> She's a she's a writer. She's a she's been around a long time. She's a public I mean, she's, figure. Yeah. Yeah, she's a public figure, and yeah. she went to interview him, and he knew she was coming to interview him, so he mm -hmm. has time to look her up. And I have already pulled screenshots of uh, obituaries from her family that show her um, in laws and who they mm -hmm. were and all that. So I mean, I've already got all that because she married a. This is a woman who is a, um, a Chicago. Um, reporter on a mm -hmm. local news station and she married i think like the weatherman or the the guy who does the traffic reports or something like that okay. he was a very famous mm -hmm. kind of person in that area and her father is a famous um like i think a broadcaster sports broadcaster so they're so all famous people and not hard to find yeah i think she them. has a wikipedia account um article and i think her father has a wikipedia article and so this is all public and so right. Thomas John lives, lived in Chicago. So it was not, I mean, it, it could be just word on the street, you know, about mm -hmm. her in-laws. She didn't tell, he didn't tell her a whole bunch of really amazing stuff. He just told her the names of his, her ex-in-laws. And mm -hmm. I think just basic stuff like that. And she thought there's no way, she writes this in her book. There's no way he could have known that. It's okay. He could have known some of this other stuff, but not any of that. I'm like, it took me all of like 10 minutes to find yeah. it, you know? <laughs> it wasn't that long ago that she wrote that book. Yeah, yeah, it was 2015, I believe. No, 2017. Yeah, 2017. Right. So anyway, so she's, the nice thing about this book and the reason why I'm going on about it is because she writes in there that she confronted Thomas John, as you said, about this idea that he had been scamming people. And then she quotes him. This is what Thomas John said to me. And yeah. that he was, just a little bit of money. I paid the people back. It was a check that was bounced and I needed a sublease, an apartment that I had. A sublet of an apartment he didn't have <laughs> over and over again. Yeah. Just, yeah. Oh my gosh. It's like, what the heck? What were, there, I, what were there 40 victims that they, that were listed in that police report? Was it 40? I think it was way more than that. Was it more than that? I just know, I remember it saying that the total was around $40,000 for all the victims. Yeah, it was 40000 that they said. Yeah, he said, when they when the yeah. police asked him, he said, oh, it was $12,000. Yeah. And now this guy's got a college degree. He can do the math. <laughs> <laughs> but as you say, yeah. it's not unusual for people to minimize something like that after it happens. However, he has continued on with right. doing thing okay let me show this something that he, that he's not giving i mean he's not giving the readings and one of the tactics i believe that he's been using that you've mentioned is he says oh well we'll delay it and they rebook and then they rebook and then it's over a year and then you can't don't have any recourse on your credit cards once it's over a year that's part of that could very well be it he's no. he offers you like online and I get something every, every day I get a, an email from his people to mm -hmm. one of my emails. And I have several that are following him and they, I receive an email every day saying that they've got to sell on some reading and the reading will be done within a week or whatever. But yet if you, the women are repeatedly telling me, and I am saying women, cause it is almost entirely women. They're saying they got the, they paid and then they're given a day far off, like, a, like six months or more because he has a waiting list. Yeah, I bet. And so the, and then when it gets to the day, either they're not given any information whatsoever about it. They're like, well, I've been waiting, you know, or they give him a zoom link and nobody answers or, or they're put off even further. Like you said, now, if you pay with a credit card, eventually the credit card is going to go, you know, it's been a year. I've seen some people say they've waited three years. Yeah. Yeah. Just getting pushed off and off and off. Yeah. 
Yeah, let me share this. Oh, um, more the reduction. This is the case supplementary report. This is one that's 12 pages long. Wow. And I'm not going to go over this. All of these links are on Internet Archive. They're all in this article. So you can go and you can take your take your time and read them through. I quoted some of the things in here. And I thought when I quoted it, it, it made it sound like I was I was saying it. And I want to just mm. clear up some of that. Um, this is written by Officer Catherine Simpson. And maybe that's why it was taken a little more seriously because the officer responded yeah. was female. Who knows? Yeah. And all of this was redacted. I did not redact it. So this is fine to release because um, I I didn't, I don't need to do it. He was born in 1984. And that's fair because you don't want to have the victim's information out there. So I think it's good they redacted yeah, it. Yeah, I, I kind of get it, but it makes it hard for people who want to contact them and say, you know, um, I don't know if somebody wanted to contact these victims. Yeah. I wonder if they could go through and get it from the police department but it wouldn't be that yeah. hard you just have to go to these these yelp reviews and the i mean they're those yeah. people have their names out there and there's yeah, something yeah. happen yeah. okay so this one was really interesting where was it i was talking about okay um he's hanging out at this fedex fedex kinko's location i can't even imagine where they said that they called up the place and they said oh yeah he's here all the time yeah and he's using our computers and he talks really loudly on his phone. And sometimes he's very aggressive and he's yelling at the people to come down here and put the, you know, and, and the money. send in the money and so on. Yeah. And so they see it. And, and there's another part in here. that says he's living out of his, a U-Haul he rented. So that's probably why he didn't have internet and all that stuff at that age. Okay. So he says, he says, once they caught him, he had to do lineups too. Can you imagine how having to go in and there's this guy a lot oh i mean what is wrong with your life if you are in a line <laughs> what happened to the psychic powers there dude um anyway he said he had him before but and he should have known the police were coming i guess huh yeah at least he should have shaved before he got his mugshot and that's the worst you're going to get out of me as far as the ad hominem all right he realized how he's okay he says in his summary, Flanagan stated that, and it's all redacted. I would love to see what it says. He mm -hmm. realized how easy it was to advertise. I wonder if I can make this bigger. Oh, yeah. Oh, I oh, can't yeah. make it that big. That's not much bigger. You should be able to he, do Control Plus to make it bigger. Yeah, maybe. Control Plus. Yeah. Nope. No, it didn't work, huh? Hmm. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Maybe hmm. because it's the Internet Archive. Who knows? All right. Yeah, it could be. He realized how easy it was to advertise an apartment on the internet. Here, I'm going to, can I highlight? No, I can't highlight it. Um, to out-of-towners. And since money was tight, the scam commenced. He admitted that he probably collected money from 50 people, taking an average of $300 from each person. He also acknowledged using his own name and these following at Alice. Aliases. Aliases. Oh, my gosh. Okay. And then these are all blank, <laughs> blanked out. It says they asked him why he yeah. would use blank or blank, and he didn't have an answer. According to the 800 website, he was uh -huh. using things like professor or so and so, and you know, very academic sounding, like doctor I, something something. So they don't list him here, so that's probably why it's redacted. He said he admitted to using Craigslist to offer apartment sublets in New York, D.C., and Boston. And he presented photos of an apartment and somewhere else it says in here that the, it's always the same pictures, no yep. matter what apartment he's doing. So he couldn't even, didn't he, wasn't even original coming up with different ones. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's like catfishing, huh? <laughs> uh, and he admitted $12,000, but don't, didn't you find somewhere else that it was more than that? It was 40 Yeah, I, it'll come up here. It says at the time okay. of the rest, Flanagan had rented a U-Haul trailer in which he was living. And they asked him what he purchased with the money and he, it was living expenses and for his drag business, which I wish he would go back to because yeah. drag is an art form. That's awesome. Absolutely. But, and his mate, he does a great job with his makeup or yeah. if he's doing, whoever it is who's doing it, they do a really good job, but um, that's a legitimate business. All right. Anyway. Um, okay. He says Chicago would not pursue charges. Yeah. Chicago would not pursue charges 
except for two cases mm -hmm. because they the victims had actually met him in person so anything that was outside of that they they didn't mm -hmm. didn't persecute um they didn't do it yeah they had to have met him yeah, yeah. so because everything else was happening online i mean yeah i think that there was a lot of room for for more prosecution but it wasn't okay yeah. lineups were conducted i that freaks me out <laughs> I don't know. That just freaks me out. So not just identifying somebody, but to yeah. be somebody in that. Oh. Um, apparently they identified him. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> one of the people that they're gonna say, Oh, we need somebody who looks like you. And you're looking at all these other people in line going, Oh <laughs> man, that guy, ooh. And then you're thinking, that's what they think I look like. And then it says scope says more than 80 people. More than 80 people. The loss of money was insignificant compared to the experience of arriving suitcase in hand to an unfamiliar city only to find that there were no accommodations. The calculated use um, redacted name to damage his professional reputation cannot be seen as accidental. What do you think is mm -hmm. under that redacted? No. What if he was using oh, somebody's the calculated real name? Use, it looks like there's a name. It says the calculated use of something or other name to damage Maybe like dr so-and-so it was a real human so, being's name I was, now, that's what i'm guessing it was a real person yeah and then now the reputation is is yeah. going to be maligned yeah um yeah and like so this person this this police officer a woman by the way gets it it's not about mm -hmm. the money it's about you show up thinking you've signed this lease you have the key in your hand mm -hmm. you're like i got it i know where i'm going to live for the next three months while i finish my internship or my professorship or my whatever you take the cab to the place you I get out <laughs> with your suitcase and the doorman says no that apartment doesn't exist or you're the fifth person today who's yeah. trying to get in yeah and they have a key like, and it doesn't fit. <laughs> what do I do? You know? It, you'd feel sick. You would feel panicked, I would assume. A lot of people would feel very panicked. Yeah, you're by yourself. If you had Especially family if you friends, have no money. If you have no money. Or very little. Yeah, it's going to be less. Because you're expecting yeah. to get paid from the from yep. whatever it is you're doing. And yeah, if you had family or friends there, you would be staying with them. Mm-hmm. So you have no family, you have no friends, you show right. up yeah. and you're, you're, you might not even know the people that you're going to be working for at the hospital or anything, because you're showing yeah. up a few days early to get, you know, it's a furnished apartment. So, yep. And then here, you're going to have to go to your, you have to go to a hotel, which I'm sure isn't cheap. No. York, Boston. And then you have to go into your first day of work at the hospital or, or the college and say, Look, I got scammed and I don't have a place to stay. What do you think yeah. those people are going to think about you for falling for a scam? Or you perceive they're going to think that about you? Oh, yes. So, so you sure might not even report it. Yeah. Oh, I mean, this just everywhere. This well, is something. It, when my son and his wife moved from Santa Barbara to Boston during the pandemic, they had no choice but to trust the people online. And they actually said to me, we're worried that we might be being scammed, but they seem honest. They showed a video, they walked us through and around and it worked out to be fine because I think most people are honest. Yeah, and yeah. during the pandemic, that was the only way you could get an apartment. And they were both getting new jobs in Boston and that was all, that was the only thing that they could do was they moved across the country during the, the pandemic, <laughs> the two of them. And that's how they got their apartment. They couldn't fly to Boston at that time. There was no flight and they knew that it was coming in a couple months, like I think it was six months when they were going to be moving and it, it, they had to plan and they had to get a place and they had to send a deposit to these strangers that they met online it was really unnerving and they knew Stressful. there was a chance. Yeah. They knew there they was had, a chance. For they had mom and dad to take care of them if they had to pony up some money mm -hmm. and your kids would be fine. But yep. just, and if you're alone, that's even worse. What if you have your moving van coming? It's on route. 
with your furniture uh, stuff. Now I know in Thomas John's case, they were supposed to be like temporary furnished. and they yeah, weren't yeah. going to be, and it was a furnished place, but mm -hmm. oh, anyway, so moving on, it was just, there's so much more to this con than just the money. And it's just the whole feeling that you get of being your whole, you know, you're supposed to be doing these things with your life. You're going to be yeah. a medical doctor. You finally got into your uh, program. Finally, you're there. You paid for your airfare or whatever. Mm -hmm. And now I'm out all this money and I don't have a place to live. And I, I, I just, I can't even imagine what starting your internship would stressful like that. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Very so going stressful. on with these documents, um, I think the person that reported him finally got him busted. $324. Oh, I should sh share my screen so people can see these. I think it was $324 for the first person. So some people, some people had more. It was, I don't know why the money is different. This one says the amount of document was $324. Yeah, it's interesting that because as I say, it's between fifty and fifteen hundred dollars. Did he kind of vet them somehow to kind of figure out well, how much money to charge them? I don't know. Some people <laughs> who are more desperate got charged more. It um this one this one has victims right here. And it does say victims and they're all redacted, but it yeah. does say underneath the amount of money. And it has the inventory. I guess these are the case numbers or something of the reporting. Right. This is 324. This is $780. That's a lot of money. This one was $650. And this one's $400. That's on page one. I mean, you know, page six of this. And then yeah. when you go to this one, there's all, there's all these others. This one's 850, 400, 1500, 780. Five seventy-five, sixty dollars. This one it says it? involves identity theft as so and so oh. used. I guess the person's name. That person that they said before. So I, I bet you that's what it is. And oh. so that person probably had to come forward and say somebody's using my name to lure victims. Yeah. They must have, otherwise they wouldn't have known about it. And this one was three hundred and fifty. Yeah. And then when you get down in here, additional additional victims. victims yeah. Um, and there's Pennsylvania, New York. It doesn't list their names, but it lists where they're from. There's wow. 49. No, 63. Yeah. More people. It says over $40,000. And the mm -hmm. amount of the above victims is over $40,000. I don't know if it included that $6,000 from the first people who had the dollar yeah. amount. I, I don't well, know. Either way, it's over 40, so we're good. Yeah, over 40. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Miss Math teacher. Um, <laughs> the thing about it, yeah. Over 40 is more than 40 grand. How much is that in Canadian dollars, Adrian? <laughs> well, all I can tell you is that with the website today, it was, uh, what was it? $232 Canadian, which amounted to like $170 US. <laughs> okay. It's not exactly, but it's, no, still a lot. it's still a big, it's a, it's still it's, a big difference. Yeah. It's yeah, around, but it's so cheap to live cents. in Canada. You know, I mean, they're giving away houses for free. Oh, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> so like people who want to live here then. Here's somebody from Germany. Here's somebody who has doctor wow. in their name. Yeah. Uh, and it says that here's his address where he lived temporarily and where they located him in the front sidewalk of Kinko's FedEx on North Clark Street. I should send this to those people in Clark. Hey, just FYI, here's a case report. <laughs> and uh, motivation is oh, and here's witnesses. Mm -hmm. Entice victims to send money for rent deposits when there was no apartment available. Money was used for living expenses, interest fees, costumes, choreographer, makeup artist for female impersonation pageants. I don't know why they had to get all that, but they got some detail. Yeah. And then this is talking about the different people that they, it turns out there were several different scammers, but all the, the victims that we've listed and the amount of money that is specific to Thomas John. But this is kind of a like a way of telling the story that they thought that there was independent, there was other people, and they weren't sure if it's all one person or is multiple. It turned out to be multiple people who were scamming. So um, here it says two recent victims actually met offender Flanagan in Chicago and described him as a white male, um, and talked about him. Both of the victims stated the offender was another person, not the person the other thought. Uh, they thought. 
this confirmed that we had a third offender working a Craigslist scam. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so that kind Going of gets into the history of it. Looking, trying to eliminate people, finding out who was involved. Yeah. Right. They knew that they had some something going on with this Craigslist, but yeah. they weren't sure how many people were doing the scam. Um, here's names used to deceive the victims included Thomas Flanagan and all these other names that are redacted. But right. we do know some of the names because, like I said, on the 1-800 uh, website that's linked to my article, you can see people saying the person's name that that right. that it, they had used. And then now this Super again, I'm stories. Yeah, I am <laughs> quoting in the article where I say this, I'm quoting the police officer who says in yeah. in communication with communications with victims, Flanagan posed as redacted. A few of Flanagan's outlandish stories regarding the reasons for the available sublet are, and here's all blocked out. Be nice to see that, huh? Yeah. What so I like? didn't say that. the The police are saying that. Yeah. And then here's a. I'm guessing there's some names in there, you know, as, and that would give away location, etc. They had yeah, to redact true. it. They got to redact all that. And then in this one, mm -hmm. so the checks are delivered to this. Um, the, oh this is another victim right here when you think about it it says they went to this large the address they went to this uh a, a large condo building without an office on site ironically the investigation showed that the condo had been sublet <laughs> and the police officer put that in because they thought it was ironic and when yeah. interviewed the recent unsuspecting tenant said that he had received numerous calls from irate people accusing him of taking their rent deposits Oh. So that's just another victim, somebody who's getting, uh, who yeah, innocently definitely. rents this yeah. built this place. Now they're getting irate people calling up. Who knows if those irate people ever are are in this report or not? Or they could be, who knows? We don't know. We only know of eighty. We don't know of there might be eight hundred. How do we know? You know. And I know you said it earlier, but I think that they've, and they've stated it in this report a couple of times about the victim is being a computer savvy, usually a graduate student, medical student, or professor. <laughs> These are not, they're smart people and they're getting scammed. Savvy. And I think that's what's happening to these women who are being scammed now as he's a psychic. They're smart women. Well, it's just, they they could be smart people, yeah, absolutely. No, but they can't just assume that they're being stupid. Yeah, and yeah, you know, no, I don't no. like it when when people say things like that. When people, any scam, whether it's somebody over the telephone, a romance scam, whether it's this you know psychic scam, any kind of scam, it's it, that's victim blaming, right? When we yeah, say, yeah, absolutely. It in the case of the women who are being victimized now with the psychic stuff. They're vulnerable. Yep. They believe in mediumship. They believe that that you can communicate with the dead for whatever reason. And they're dealing with grief. And they're dealing yeah. with grief. A lot of them are in very vulnerable positions yeah. where they just want to they very just want to reach out to and find out their loved ones. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're vulnerable. But these people who are trying to get in a sublet are also vulnerable yep. for a different reason. But mm -hmm. you know, we they fell for the scam. They're tech yep. savvy. They're professionals. They have degrees some are professors a lot of them i bet didn't even report it because they would be embarrassed uh, mm -hmm. for Amen. people to find out that they yeah so i think that there's a lot more than we realize okay let's see continuing with this this part here it says yeah here's the part you're talking about that these people are tech savvy um another victim is blank sometimes they're employed where travel is required as such as in the case of redacted so-and-so redacted sent him a check for $500 for temporary housing. This right here, this line right here just breaks my heart. It says, perhaps the most heart rendering case is a victim from Texas. And there's several lines. Mm -hmm. That person obviously never got any satisfaction out of this. And so mm -hmm. um, then this little paragraph is a little victim blaming because the yep. police officer is saying, you know, if you, you there's on craigslist there's a big sign saying avoid scams and stuff and and they should have done a google earth s search and um or so on and the police officer does say that the price charged by flanagan was fair 
and it mm. wasn't a deal that was too good to be true. So that's anyway. usually a flag, red flag, right? So yeah, you would think by now I've got five people who went near or anything like that. Yeah. But still, and then this is more details. Um, this was interesting. Um, it talks about when it started in 2008 and ooh, some other stuff in here that I don't want to read out right now, but um, what other people said, and people can read this. Okay, here it says, as one can imagine the nightmare that ensued included injured parties of the Sudblet scam tracing the whereabouts redacted, direct fraud accusations redacted, were made over the phone, the mail and postings on the internet redacted, was contacted by no less than 13 victims. And he referred them to whoever who is handling his identity theft case at the New York. Oh, so that would be really interesting to find out who that was and get that person's story. See, this is how I can't get rid of this because somebody is going to write to me and say, here, I know who, here who it is. Yeah. And I should be able to get, hey, JD, <laughs> if you're listening, can you find, uh, use file another FOIA and see if you can find out who is handling the identity theft case at the New York District Attorney's Office where somebody had been contacted several times after. His, okay, all that. There's some victim there that he was using somebody's. Yep. Oh my gosh, you guys. It just, it's like I say, it's way more than the money. It's, um, it's a lot. Okay, so where are we at here? Okay. So he found, he realized how easy it was to advertise an apartment on the internet to out-of-towners. Gosh, that's just omitting it, you know? Oh yeah, well, it was really easy to scam people. So eh, why not? They should have known better. You know, he was <laughs> laughing at these people. You know, he yeah. was. Ooh. Um, we, we asked him why he did this. Okay, I already went over this, I think. He says it was twelve thousand mm. dollars, and the U held her. Oh, I wonder how I got back on that again. Um, let's see. Yeah, Something. it's like it's repeating itself in the oh, report. Yeah, it is. Okay, yeah. so, um, yeah, about the lineups. It's a loss of money was insignificant. Okay, the ruling was made on August twentieth, two thousand and nine. He's found guilty on two counts of theft. He received thirty months probation, and is required to pay court costs of five hundred eighty-five dollars. It does not appear that he was directed to make any restitution or seek psychological help. And the case is closed. And I think that that lack of restitution is just, I guess he didn't have any money left. I mean, how would they get it? I guess. Living in than... the U-Haul. <laughs> and I knew that U-Haul was coming in because the Feast of Fun podcast is uh, in Chicago and it's a drag podcast. Um, I, you know, I've talked to them. I've interviewed with them. They're, they're great people. And they have talked about, they've told me stories about Thomas John or Lady Vera Parker, his persona. Mm -hmm. They've talked about that and what had gone on. And it's stuff that I can't really repeat because, you know, I, I don't have evidence for it. But they did talk about this U-Haul and that he was driving around this U-Haul that he was supposed to have turned in and that he didn't turn it in. And the police, um, they reported it missing and then they caught him and then there was all these cancel checks in there that they're like made out to people who are not him and that was part of this how they caught him that's what i was told and right this police report if it's the only police report and i don't know if it is there may be more mm -hmm. that's what i you know that kind of justifies is something about this u-haul so i don't know i just knew something about a u-haul are there people is there a group of women who are have pressed charges against him in small claims court or have there been women that you found that have gotten together to try to mm -mm. I don't know well what they all happen. complain Press you know charges women come to me all the time saying we got to do something they want to do a class action lawsuit okay right a class action lawsuit would be impossible because you've got to get somebody to take it on right which is really hard. They're going to have they, money. Yeah. That you didn't have to have <laughs> some money and it takes years because they've got to, yeah. they've got to publicize it and have all the victims report in. Yeah. 
and then the lawyer takes the majority of the settlement. I mean, people are going to get pennies on the dollar. So if you paid $500, if you can prove you paid $500, you know, you might end up with a $50 settlement. It's not worth it. Right. It's just, I mean, Except it's, for it's getting stressful. justice, I guess that would be it. Even, even still, you know, they're going to, it's not a guarantee. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a nightmare. And then small claims court. People have tried one woman and I have the documents. I haven't, I was going to do a video on this also. She sent me the documents. Um, she had filed a small claims court in a state and the, um, like one of those, ad, one of those advocacy groups, like a um, news agency, like her local newspaper, they would go through the small claims stuff and they would look for an interesting case and they contacted right. her. And they said, uh, "Hey, would you like to be on our segment of the news? And we'll we'll yeah. feature this, and we'll see if we can get our money back for you." And she said, "Yeah, absolutely." And so they contacted Thomas John, and Thomas John immediately refunded her money. And I have the documents on that. I just haven't released it. <laughs> so that's what we all have to do: is be able to get the attention of the local media. How do we do that when the local media is so busy trying to tell everybody that Thomas John is a real deal? And exactly. I, you know, the media is a double-edged sword. If they're, yeah. if they're on the side of good or the yeah. side of evil, you know, yeah. the enablers. So, so she sent me that stuff. So he will give you his money back if you, because he doesn't want no trouble with the law yeah. for obvious reason. This will come so, out. Has anybody with a friend who's a lawyer who can write an official kind of lawyer <laughs> letter? But who would you send it to? Is he hard to track down? Yeah, I don't have his address. I know he's in West Hollywood, but his right. his um his business address is in New York City. And people have gone to this building in New York City where his business address is, and there's no business, there's no, there's no there. the building's there, but there's no no Thomas office John. in there at all with his name mm -hmm. or anything. So and I think the doorman has said, or the people there have said, yeah, other people have come looking for this also. So uh, the other address we have is his is his sister's living in it, and uh, it's a house. We have that because he's had to write checks to women, right. and like write a check because he can no longer use PayPal. Right. So he's mailed checks. So we we know that address. And one woman called the police and sent the police to the house, and the and the sister's like, hey, he's in California. I don't know. So his family's covering, and said. And yeah. so the police were going to follow up on that. I don't know what ended up happening, but um, it must have scared the police. I think Thomas John finally mailed that woman a check also because she called the police on him. So small claims. Now, you and I have a good friend, Robin. She works for, she's in California and she works for the courthouse. She's an attorney. And she, one of the things she does is people come in and they say, I need to do this thing a divorce a sue somebody whatever what paperwork do i fill out and so they hand out the paperwork and they kind of advise you know what how to fill it out you know they're not they don't want to give legal legal advice and she says that they that small claims court is a joke she says that you can get your claim you can file it if he's not going to show up because this is an internet thing, right? It's a lot of it. He's right. not in yeah. your place. He's not in the state right. where you had the this happen to you. And you, Robin tells us that if you get a judgment, she says it's just, they have a slang term for it. And I can't quite remember what it is. Somebody in the comments who's watching this, you probably know the, the term, put it in the comments because I can't quite remember. But they have a slang term for it that's like, you ain't going to get crap. Yeah. Because you can't enforce it. Yeah. Small claims is for people who um, who are scared of the court and will pay it up or who are like locals and they know they have like to. The neighbor's disputing or something. Yeah, like a neighbor or something like that. They know that something's going to happen yeah. to it. If they don't, they want to clear the reputation. You can, you can sue this guy. You're going to win, but you can't get a judgment. So, right. I mean, you're not going to get money back for it. So what do you do? So that's what I'm going to say is you sort of had a, a call to action of some sort. What what were you hoping would happen? You know, Adrian, I'm really glad you brought that up because 
I don't want to deal with this. I, I, I have had multiple readings from Thomas John. Sometimes he knew it was me and I have been able to get my money back or not my money back, but my, he did the reading. Yeah. He, so he, I don't have a claim against him in this way. Right. But at a certain point, the people who are in these groups, like these Facebook groups and, and people who write me letters all the time and are on Yelp and on the Better Business Bureau site and all these places complaining about it, they need to have something they could do. They write to me in frustration constantly and yeah. they want to get a lawyer. They want to get class action. They don't want to, they don't know what to do. The media yeah. isn't responding to them. Thomas John leaves them, you know, they leave them email after email after email until he finally blocks them. They call him, he blocks them. Um, and I think they need to take this on. The victims who are women, mostly, I want them to take this on. I want them to say, give us something practical we can do. And I that's what I'm hoping to do. This article has everything in one and it has nothing to do with mediumship, has everything to do with the fraud of paying for some item or service and not receiving it. Right. That's that's 100%. And all the links are there, including the court um, court things. I think there's 12 in this one I just was showing you, but there's m like maybe eight or nine more pages that you can find that are also there. And... I want them to go to the people who have made this happen, who perpetuate this, the enablers. And that's anybody who's ever interviewed him. Right. Anyone who's ever as a celebrity who has endorsed him and he uses their name. He says, oh, so-and-so I got, I use, I gave readings to so-and-so and they think I'm brilliant. Um, yeah. Dr. Gary Schwartz, um, who is the, professor over in university of arizona that everybody likes to use his name doctor he's he's not i mean you guys dr gary schwartz ain't nothing okay he's a professor he's a prestigious post but he's not he's like a okay i don't want to say much more about him because this isn't about gary schwartz but he needs um he's thomas john's going to be doing a cruise in october of 2024 and he's inviting people to come on and he's the celebrity I think the cruise line should know what kind of person yes. is because these people are all say, I didn't know. Well, yeah. we need to let them know the woman who wrote the book, whatever her name was, Jennifer, whatever it is. Yeah. Reach out to her. So these women, what you'd like to see them do is to reach out to the media, reach out to this woman who wrote the book, send letters, have a concerted effort mm -hmm. to actually whether it be coming up with some kind of a form letter that you can adapt, like a boilerplate, I guess is what I'm trying to say, that can be adapted for each person you're sending right. it to and just blast it out. Possibly. And have every every single person have a variation of it. And right. number probably will speak volumes. I think so. I think that if they get repeatedly, I mean, obviously there's, mm -hmm. I mean, he's done a bunch of TV news, morning news things in Chicago um, and, and other places. And I and think fairly recently I, too, right? Yeah, yeah. I've way after the New York Times article came yeah. out. Yeah, and I think that these again, completely eliminating the psychic stuff, going to this this fraud, yeah. and I can use the word fraud because that's what they called it in the in the court documents. That's that right. They need to um not give them any more publicity cbs yeah. cbs all acts and we can do a show lifetime yeah, Caesar we can Palace. alleged fraud right <laughs> no this is, this is definitely he he this is he, yeah it's the fraud yeah. the previous fraud and right now with the psychic scams that he's they, where he's actually well, it's not a psychic scam it's a business scam yeah it, where he's booking things but not showing up sure. it could be money. the same thing if somebody's coming to you said i'm going to come to your house and put a new roof on your house i do great work look at all my testimonials this yeah. is the same thing exactly yeah. so he says here's all my testimonials and mm -hmm. 
you say, I'm going to come to your house. I'm going to put a roof on your house, but you got to pay me in advance because I'm really busy. And you pay them. And then he doesn't show. Or he says, oh, I'll come in a couple months. I'm sorry, my dog got sick. Oh, I'm sorry, my luggage is gone. Oh, I'm sorry, my internet's out. I can't make it. Oh, my foot, uh, you know. And you never show up to put the roof on the house, which is a tangible thing. Of course, a roof is a real thing. But so that's completely eliminating the fact that that's not a real thing. But it's a service you pay for. Yeah, it's a service to talk to it. But if you never show up, and I think that's what the police, I think that's the way they need to pitch it to the police and to the media. Yes. I, it's the same thing as somebody saying they're going to do this thing. I paid them in advance and they never showed up. And then they ghosted me and they keep putting it off. And, and I think if they tell the story in their own words of how it affected them, how, tell their story, et cetera, say, you know, I had to get a babysitter um, because I, I didn't want to be just uh, interrupted whenever I have my reading and, you know, I, I arranged for a babysitter or I arranged time Some off. Some people took off work. Yeah. The woman rescheduled her surgery. So yeah. she'd be there for the reading that Thomas Dunn was going to give her. And then he didn't show. Yeah. Oh my gosh. We have that. It's in an article. It's in one of the videos, uh, screenshots of that. It's like, it's so much more of it than the money. Yeah. It's, it's all the things that these women feel re-victimized and some people he says he'll give them their money back but that he has to write them a check and some women are like i don't want to give him my address what do yeah. i do i want my money yeah. back yeah do i have to rent a p.o box somewhere to get my money back <laughs> and my you know i can have it sent to my mom or something but you know they don't want to do that because they don't want to have to explain yeah. or you know or their workplace or and something. you don't want if you don't want them to have your address you don't want them to have your mom's address either yeah that's true <laughs> so send it to a neighbor <laughs> put a different name so there's lots of people who don't want to get they're afraid of that they just want a reversal on their credit card but yeah. the credit card but you know you i don't know why they can't some of these people are paying with cash app and they're not and especially if too much time has passed oh. they're not getting their money back The point is, there's this is just the tip of the iceberg with this. All we see are the few that we see, Mm -hmm. and there's a lot, as you say. There's there's almost a thousand people on that one Facebook group. Nine hundred people, yeah. And then there's another Facebook group with two hundred people. Now, I'm not saying that all of them are. um, I'm like I'm there, and some other people that have not been defrauded, um, right, are there. But you know, let's say there's five hundred, seven hundred women. And there's new people all the time coming in. And yeah. some of them luckily are finding it just after they booked. And then you know how I've done this where I go, oh, that's cool. I'm going to buy that. And then you, re- oh, maybe I should look up the reviews. You know, that kind of second guessing yourself. Yeah, yeah. Think, something feels a little <laughs> odd about this. Yeah, I think I better yeah. go check out and make sure that this is legit. And then you go, oh, look what I found. Yes, <laughs> I've had many people write to me and say, Something just didn't feel right. And I Googled it. Yeah. And I found you, Susan. And I found yeah. your articles. Or I found the Wikipedia page or whatever. And they're the like, Facebook thank you group. so much. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was it's about to send you $700. Right away. Yeah. What was that story about 700 Well, they, somebody uh, just oh, recently yeah. said, I, I was about to send them $700. And I Googled you first. I Googled it first. And, the, and I got, uh, I got your articles. I hear that probably every month, somebody's saying that wow. they were about to, and they Googled him first or did an internet search or went to Wikipedia or whatever it is. And they found these articles. Some people say they've read all my articles and, you know, they go through it and they're like, oh my gosh, I had no idea. Yeah. Or they say, you know, my sister-in-law had it done and something just didn't feel right to me. Right. And so she was encouraging me to get a reading because he does do readings. I mean, he Mm -hmm. will. Yeah. I'm guessing that the ones that they pay the thousand dollars, I guess he shows up for those ones. I don't think so. Not always. Because there's been several people who've said they've had $900 or more uh, that he never showed up for. They've also had, um, I've seen him do readings for people like on TikTok or on um, Facebook Live and things like that. And they don't even have to give him money. 
like he'll do the like they're just he'll just go live and the people mm -hmm. will co post in the comments and there's no money exchange he'll do a brief reading of him of course what we find is the person who's saying you know contacting him you look at their facebook profile which is right there yeah. and he just repeated what was on their facebook profile i can see that yeah it i've done articles on that too yeah. and they're yeah. like oh my gosh how did you know how could you have Oh my gosh, you just posted he does about it on your Facebook page, lady. That's how he knows. But that's beside. So I've seen him do readings free. But that's it's kind of like a people in, right? Look at how good I am at this. You, and then they all book. I have a lot more information for you. You're going to have to book a real reading for me. Yeah. I can give you a special, get on my mailing list, and I'll send yeah. you a link, you know. It's only $150. I'll do it next week. I'll do it by text. I'll do it on, uh, we can do a Zoom. We can do an email. Hey, I just had a cancellation. It's only $450. I, <laughs> I mean, he could have just, with the quality, he, he didn't have to even hot read people. The guy could have just taken the people's money and done a quick reading with them. Yeah. yeah. And they might have said, no, nah, it was crap. Was or whatever. Yeah, but at least I got something. Yeah. Yeah, well, I don't know if I'll go to him again. He could yeah. have legitimately have done this. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't I can't get into his mind. Thankfully, I don't want to get into the his only, mind. I mean, this is pure speculation, but I'm just wondering if he gets so many of these 50 or 150 and he's just rocking taking that money in and then he gives a few just to keep stay legit, but there's just way too many for him to be able to do them all. And it's, he, it suits him. I mean, I can't, as a, why else would this be happening? As you say, if he was actually getting and booking people, then you don't have to have a great reading there. What, what are most of the readings? 15 minutes, half an hour. Depends on how much they pay, right? Yeah, it depends on how much you pay. Yeah. I mean, he could have, he could just, I mean, he could have written a script for like love, uh, travel or whatever, and just read them <laughs> off. I've heard of psychics doing that, that where they get this In fact, Well, I don't want to get into that. I was going to say something else, but that'll get us off into an even bigger tangent. But I mean, there's, you could have done that, but he didn't, yeah. you know, I don't he understand. Didn't. Like with, with the, with the Craigslist scam, he used, it was just laziness. I mean, he's, he's calling He's people up on the phone and telling them you got to get your thing yeah. down here using his real name in some cases yeah. yeah i don't think he i don't think he's that organized this is my personal opinion yeah. of following him for so long yeah. i don't think he's Fair that enough. organized i think he just yeah. throws it out there and whatever money comes in money comes in i don't think he needs to keep a spreadsheet or anything of this i think he just is like the money's coming but that's in. the case it's not he's not uh purposefully doing it he's just scattered and has maybe lost track of things but oh by now he's got to have lost there's no way well he's had people um he's run through of some assistance he keeps yeah. hiring assistants he had yeah. tracy for a very long time and she there was a big breakup between them i don't know what happened but we've well, that's had... why i say it feels more deliberate right because it, it, that versus scattered i think there may be a combination of both <laughs> good days but and bad days good days and bad days but those are a lot of bad days if you've got that many people you're not getting readings to for years and it's not just and he probably probably's years. just like oh well i can't deal with it just whatever just let him keep let him keep calling me let him keep emailing me i'm just gonna ban him his it's odd adrian because his facebook page his own facebook page i was looking at this today and it's in the article you can go through the posts he makes, which are getting less and less frequent. I think he's mostly on TikTok now. Mm -hmm. And and you could see people posting stuff like, I, what's going on? My reading was 40 minutes ago. I've been sitting here waiting. Yeah. And that post that's sitting on his Facebook page under, like as a comment, has been there for weeks. Nobody's removed it. It's like. So nobody's monitoring it, including him. Nobody's monitoring, monitoring it. A woman um, told me came forward uh, i don't remember how many months ago and she came forward and she was, she said it's so disorganized she spent all her time trying to deal with people who was asking for refunds and she just was just like 
these people need refunds. These people need refunds. These people need refunds. But she gave out her personal email and mm -hmm. there was no like person at Thomas uh, medium, thomas.com, right. nothing like that. It was her personal email and she was trying to give, give information to people. And what happened is after she quit, cause she quit, they, she was still getting people still getting people coming to her email saying wait you promised me a refund and she's like i quit and they're like but you but what are we supposed to do and she's like i don't know yeah I, it's just and there so, was a, an interview recently with i think it was a journalist but i think it might have been a paid thing but i'm not really are you sure about that um young man who came to the house Mm, that beautiful house that he was oh yeah that house with the swimming pool in yeah, west hollywood uh, let's house. talk some money there how do you get a mortgage if you're buying a house if you have no w-2 income yeah i don't know i'm guessing as a maybe he's still living in the u-haul <laughs> he just rented it for the day <laughs> oh no i've seen that house and a lot of pictures his boyfriend's instagram okay. page has has pictures and so that's that problematic that's purposeful then and that's yeah. unfortunate well that guy needs to be known uh, and there's a video over here he's needs yeah. to be notified because he's like oh well there is this this woman i don't know if we should name her that she keeps she's obsessed with you and she's and something something she says these things about you what do you say about that thomas john and thomas john's like she's just a baby photographer she's just a photographer at jc Penney's or at sears or whatever so she's not a scientist oh man that just Floats my boat. You too. Huh? You know. Dude, you know what I feel about that. It frosts your cookie. It frosts my cookie. That's it. <laughs> I love Adrian. She's so awesome. It frosts her cookie. They did. Mm -hmm. You of all people do the same damn thing to me. Yeah. Like yeah. You're over only a photographer again. by trade, Susan. So why should you have any say? Yeah. It's you, just yeah. Infantizing. You, you, you could you could talk about baby photography and that's it. It's bizarre. Not. <laughs> I can see fraud. I can see what's going on. And these oh. other women can too, if they weren't in grief and they weren't desperate and they hadn't been led to believe that this was possible and they just need to find the right medium that will connect them to their dear departed that they want to know if everything's okay. I can't, yeah. I can yeah. blame them in some ways because it's like this information has been out there for decades, what's going on in the mediumship world. And I've been reporting on Thomas John in the New York Times. Come on now. Since 2018, February 2018. How do you not know this? How do you not do a Google search? So in some ways, I'm just like, look, people. What do you want me to do? Get on a, uh, you know, put up billboards everywhere. And, you know, I mean, what can what can we possibly do to inform you not to not to do this? But in well, other ways, a lot of these people, it just, they want to trust and they, they don't want to think bad of somebody and they had a good reading with somebody else before. So, you know, and he's on TV. Yeah. It gives them leg legitimacy. legitimacy. Sure. He was on my morning yeah. news this morning. He was, he was, you know, he's at Caesar's palace. They wouldn't have given Caesar's palace wouldn't have given this guy this, if he, if he was um, going to harm us. Mm -hmm. So that's why I want the enablers to be. That's why I think that we need to go to the enablers. And by we, I mean those people who are victims of him and anybody else who really wants to. But I do think that the people who are, who are, who have been complaining about this for years, I want them to take the power back and say, I'm done with this. I'm going to go to the venue where he had done his event. The, uh, the, publisher who did this the the um you know where, wherever just be creative and think it through yeah There's yeah and lots of people need to be known i don't know what well, happen. Happen. there's also i i know melanie Teresa king talks about just general pseudoscience and how do you tell when a post is true well you take the name of the post or the name of the the claim and you go you know I don't know, UFOs uh, in Calgary, and you'll say, uh, 
you add a word, which is, is it true? Or, you know, you have to add that sort of to see fake, if there's anything out scam, there. Is it fake, fraud. Scam? Yeah, exactly. And you can do that as a consumer for any goods. I mean, there's so much scams, not just for psychic mediums, like yeah. Mechanic. Strong, what you're doing. Yeah. Vacation just, rentals, I, vacation. Well, uh, buying a dress, buying. Oh, something I, bought online? A, I bought a dog toy off of this. <laughs> And I got something that in the mail that was just not what you, you, there's TikToks about people ordering stuff like a full size Christmas tree. And then they get this for their hundred dollars. I remember that they had a picture of her, uh, one of them had a picture of a car, uh, chair. It's a beautiful chair. Nice chair. They got a chair about this yeah. big. So I've got, chair, I, they didn't see the measurement you know, but part. I, but they don't necessarily list it. Right. So they, they just, it looked like a real chair. And so what I've done since I got that toy, that wasn't really the same toy. I always go on and say, whatever the company's name, cause they're always changing. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, rate it. Mm -hmm. And trust pilot is a really good one. Trust pilot will come up and say, Oh yeah, this is not good. <laughs> and I was looking for some camera equipment that I couldn't get in Calgary. And up came this downtown camera from Toronto. I don't know this place. So I did that. I went downtown camera rated and trust pilot came up and I read the ratings and everybody thought they were great. And it was like 4.9 out of five. Okay. I'll trust this company. And yes, I get the product, but that that's, I think our first line for any of these people, we have to look into them. If you're looking for a psychic medium, if that's what you really want, go and Google them first. Google them Don't first. just take your friend's recommendation because they may have been scammed too. And don't go Thomas John, awesome psychic. Go or, Thomas or, or John to his Cam website. Yeah, don't go to his website. You have to put those sort of, you know, those other Fraud. words to, to get the other side. Exactly. To see yeah, if there's I, something. I agree. It, it's, it's just also I like to buy from either brick and mortar places that I know mm -hmm. that if I was to receive something and it was broken, maybe then I take it back that I yeah. could get my money back for it. Or mm -hmm. I, I do buy from Amazon, mm -hmm. you know, what are you going to do? Because <laughs> you want it cheaper and you want it delivered to your house. Yes, I do. Sometimes I feel a little guilty about it, but, um, at least on Amazon, those sellers should have been vetted. Not all of them have been, but they're more no, likely to handle it if they find out somebody who's, you know, I mean, if you're buying something and you want a really good deal on it, maybe that, maybe it's not such a good deal. Yeah. I mean, exactly, yeah. I don't think there's anybody, <laughs> what is that old joke about the Nigerian? Do you remember those Nigerian letters? We used to, I used oh, to get yeah. physical letters. I remember yeah, that. Physical letters, yeah. Yeah, now that there was else. somebody doctor so-and-so who wanted to give me you know millions of u.s dollars and he's in nigeria yeah. and it's and i remember that and people fell for that oh, yeah and and there's a there's a cartoon out there that says um and it's a guy sitting at his desk and he's got piles of money and he's and his wife walks in and she says you still haven't gotten rid of that money yet and he's like i keep trying to give it to people and nobody will believe me and it's just piles and piles of money and coin and goals and diamond and stuff. He's like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, but nobody believes that I actually have it. And she's like, I, what the heck, you know, I don't know. So Adrian, final words. <gasps> final words. Uh, I guess I think we've kind of said it that always check as well as if you are a victim and find yourself a victim do what you can write to the media that support those people write to people let them know i think for in this particular case i think it's you've got a lot of evidence to show and yeah, this, this should do it. yeah i i would be surprised if a local tv place wouldn't take this up because of the sheer numbers of people who are on these facebook groups and who are on better business bureau i mean there's a paper trail yeah i guess it's a 
this isn't something I'm <laughs> like know, saying but... shame this person because yeah. I didn't like the service I got or I found it's a hair in person. my soup. Mm -hmm. It's not a couple of people, you know, we're all, there are lots of people who will just complain, but this is a case of many, 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 many people over mm -hmm. and over again, having the same thing happen. The yeah. same story as you see people missing these appointments, waiting, waiting, skipping work or not skipping, taking a day off work, postponing surgery. I just, that, that poor woman, <laughs> that poor woman. I, I hope, I know it wasn't like open heart surgery or anything like that, but it was yeah, still, you know, was surgery. She had to put it off for another day. I, I hope that people take this seriously and see it for what it is. It has what I'm I have a cat right here. Yes. That is the cat right there that you see in the corner. Um, and I hope they understand that it's not about him having a record at all. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel really bad about it. Actually. I just feel worse about people who are continuing this because there's a lot of people out there who have no idea that this is happening to other people. They think it's just them mm. and they don't compare notes. A lot of people aren't tech savvy. They're not on Facebook. They don't understand. And, you know, there are people who probably just say, Oh, it's a hundred bucks. Oh, well, yeah, boy, that was dumb. I don't want anybody in my family to know. I've had a few women who contacted yeah. me who were furious at what happened and to them. And, I said, okay, well, let your friends and family know. If if nothing else, at least warn people in your peer group. Mm -hmm. Because um, like on Nextdoor or on Yelp or wherever, just let people know and, and that kind of thing. And and would you like to do an interview with me? I'll do an interview, do an article. We can you know post on Facebook or something. Mm -hmm. Let other people know. And I've had several women say they, they're going to do it. They're so mad. And then their husband intercedes and says, you will not. This ends here. And you're like, and I've had people uh, respond saying, I am so sorry. My husband is furious at me. And he doesn't want me talking to you ever again. And he, he doesn't want to, nope, I'm not allowed to say anything to anybody and all that. And I'm like, wow but that's yeah. it that's like if, if you don't speak person. out then it's going to happen to this person yeah. that person and you don't know who else it's going to happen to oh because are you're not speaking out is that why the husbands are doing this because why are they ashamed of their wives is that what this is about embarrassment which know. is really they won't say i've had i've stuff. had several people tell me that their husband nixed it and said i cannot I had an interview with one woman. I was going to do a Zoom with her, and she says, "My husband said absolutely not. This is you're not to you're not to talk to that woman again, and you're not to um, do that." And I've had women tell me that their husband had warned them beforehand, like they said, "My husband told me not to get this reading, and I did it anyway, and now I realize what happened and how this happened, and now my husband's like, see, you shouldn't have done it. I told you so." and don't ever do this, anything like this again and just keep quiet about it it's only a hundred dollars or whatever that's how it keeps on happening mm -hmm. is by being quiet about it unfortunately right. some people are afraid they're absolutely afraid of him he's he's hmm. been very mean to them um i've had many people tell me and i've seen some posts from people mm -hmm. who've, who've posted screenshots of their text or email conversations with them that's quite scary and he calls them all sorts of bad words and um, they're afraid, absolutely afraid of him. I've had many people tell me I can't come forward because I'm afraid of him. There's nothing I could do. I will tell you these things in confidence or I will, um, mm -hmm. if you take out, redact everything about who I am, where I'm at, you can post it. But these are people who are vulnerable in most yeah. cases. Yeah. And there's a reason why his victims are those mm -hmm. if they were harder you know, to fight back yeah they're not likely to fight back and so it's okay for him and then the police are like well you know you've got a hundred dollar case that's all they see mm -hmm. and yet i've got all these other things thousands of dollars so your hundred dollars you know do better mm -hmm. la lady 
that was done. Learn your lesson. And it continues because he wasn't held accountable the first time. Yeah. Yeah. The only people who can hold him accountable now are the people who are going to reach out to all these enablers because you know what? So media has got to get involved. Big media mm -hmm. is going to say, oh my gosh, this is a great story. And then it'll go further and it'll go further. And I, 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 I throw my hands up people. You're going to have to do this yourselves. I can't, I yeah. cannot do any more. And right Thomas to John. John is, he did. Somewhere Thomas he did. John is going, ah, <laughs> it's in your hands now, people. Thank you so much, Adrian. It's always fun. I know. I love, I love talking to you. Um, I just, I see I have about 20 messages already sitting on my thing and this isn't even live yet. Oh, well, cool. if you need to get a hold of me or you want, um, a media to get a hold of me for whatever reason, Susan Gerbic at gmail.com, Facebook messaging me. Make sure you get the right Susan Gerbic because there is a cousin who I've never met that has the same name, my age. Poor lady, she probably gets all sorts of scary messages. Maybe from some of the UFO people. <laughs> the UFO people are probably <laughs> sending her messages. She's probably very upset. Okay, everybody. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Bye, Adrian. Bye.